Well, you can see I've done quite a bit of work on this little bird. All I really need left to do is to add the uh, board here and uh, for my color. So that's pretty easy. Just adding in a bit of browns and um, that's a nice brownish color that I could blend with some of the other. So this is something where I'd like to get it up inside these feathers. See how I'm like kind of going up in there? That gives that jagged feather edge. I may make it a bit darker. Notice I'm using more of a brown to make sure you also might want some interesting line edges. This is a piece of wood, so darks and lights and splintery edges and such. You know, the brown will help that black of the foot to pop out. So basically just kind of putting this last it in. Think of how wood looks, lights and darks and some graying bits because it's, you know, grayed up a bit. Um, so that line weight I talked about, that's, that's kind of more of a drawing technique where you, you um, kind of press, you can twist a sharp Pencil is a good idea. This needs a little more. Get a nice tip. Now, colored pencil will break easy on you. But, giving that a nice edge. Just to give it some interest so it's not just all the same. It's okay if it looks a little warped. Maybe we add a knot hole in here darker on the inside, right? Some darker grooves here and there where it's maybe got a split in it. So yeah, that's pretty much it to finish this thing off. This white plastic eraser is handy for erasing out bits you didn't intend. Colored pencil does not like to erase. I caution you though, if you use one of these and you get some color on it, you need to clean it on another piece of paper to make sure that you're not going to transfer any color on there onto your drawing, because if you, it, that can definitely happen um, with the eraser. Then I prefer the kneaded eraser because it doesn't leave shavings that you have to brush off. And then you get the dirt of your hands, or graphite that might be on your hands, grease on your hands, can cause the pencil to repel from the paper, leave marks you don't really want. So that's the thing you gotta kind of think about. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. So since this bird is a little on the whimsical side, I'm also not too worried about whether this board is completely accurate in looking exactly like wood. I just need him to be sitting on something instead of floating in the air. So there he is. I will post this and the finished drawing. And uh, hopefully you can have fun. So when you're doing such a thing, notice how I'm trying to put the bulk of the color in in the direction the wood exists. We talked about that with the bird as well. Get a little center here. And then this bit, the, the, the sawed end is, end is sometimes more blotchy. And I definitely want some. And I'll probably pull out another brown maybe so it's not just that one shade of brown in there give a little more interest okay so 
there's my little Mr. Bluebird. Um, pretty much, I want some sort of edge definition. Usually you can decide either the top is darker or the side is darker. I'm going to make a little bit of an edge here. Now you could come in here and do this with the burnishing like we did up here as well if you wanted. I like the rough texture of a piece of wood. So I am not going to do that blending that makes it super smooth in this case. But you do it however you want on your picture. Okay. That's about it. Sign my name. I think I'll use this blue. And Thanks for watching. I'll bring more to you guys later. Bye-bye.